World Cup finals. Ray Stubbs caught up with the England coach Glenn Hoddle at the end of a triumphant yet traumatic week. When you were back at your desk and reflected on what happened in Rome, what are your thoughts now? Well, obviously, it was a fantastic evening football-wise. It was superb. I mean, to actually qualify for the World Cup, uh, which we haven't done for eight, eight years, is, uh, has been absolutely a wonderful 12 months for us. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for me now to thank the players and um, to thank all my staff, all the backroom staff, medical staff. It's been a massive effort. Um, but as I said in the press conference afterwards, the hard work starts now. It's been a pity that what you achieved has been diluted somewhat by all the talk of how the English fans were treated in Rome. Yes, I'm glad you've asked me that because I, I personally had four very uh, guests, good guests of mine go to the, to the game. And some of the experiences that they actually went through were incredible. And uh, the provocation that the, the England supporters and these people were put through was qu quite incredible. Uh, and the restraint of the uh, supporters was fantastic. I mean, our support, the support was marvellous on the night. I mean, every, everyone could see that. The, the verbal support, uh, the problems in the stadium wasn't down to English supporters, without a doubt. Um, but it's some of the things that my friends told me after the game, what happened when they were held in coaches and heaters were turned on and the doors were locked and they were moved five or six yards. And the provocation that the England supporters were, were put through um, I need to say this because at the end of the day they haven't got a voice. The unfortunate thing, what my friend said, is that the, at the atmosphere and, the, and the, uh, the attitude was, well, we're not going to go to France if we're going to get treated like that. And I think that's such a shame because we do need them type of supporters, which most 99% of them that went to Rome were fantastic supporters for England. There was no trouble from, from them and we need that sort of support. If we're going to win the World Cup, we need that support in France. But surely some of the anger must be redirected at the fans that wreck England's reputation abroad. Shouldn't we be also targeting them and saying, well, let's sort them out because they're making it difficult for all of us? I think you're right. I think, that we've, come, I think we've come to a time where I think, you know, at government level, and I can't go into too many details, but I know the people in the FA, it's not my job, the people in the FA, we need to, to, to converse more with the, go with the government, which has been happening, and I think when it's time has come where we can. Can we stop these people travelling? Can we stop them, you know? And I think we can if, we, if, if the needs are there. Then if we want to, we yeah, can. Yeah, I'm sure we can. And uh, it's something that uh, needs to be delicately looked at. Uh, it's not my job to look at that. It's not my, you know, my job is on the football side of things. But I say, you know, I've got a voice now, if you like. I say it is time that we actually look at that. And if we can prevent that, um, then that's going to take us a long, long way down the line. Our supporters have been fantastic. Do you have a message for England's professional footballers? Is age in the past no barrier? No, no barrier. No. Whether you're, whether you're uh, a young 17-year-old or you're 36, it doesn't bother. It doesn't bother me. It's about talent and um, who knows, there might be a few surprises. It is an exciting time, isn't it? Um, yes, I mean, you've asked me that on a very difficult week, but uh, yeah, in the future, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, if you're a footballer, and you love your football, whether you're a player or a supporter, it's an exciting time if you've qualified for the World Cup and, uh, and we're going to be there. Yeah, it's a lot to look forward to. Are you ready? Are you dealing with the expectation, the responsibility and the fact that you're becoming public property? You've seen that this week. No, I, I knew that when I took the job over. I, I think uh, as a club manager, you're to a certain degree, you're public property. Uh, certainly the England coach, you're public. Look, uh, I'll only say one thing is, you know, there's a lot of private things to be said about what's happened this way. It's nothing to do with the job, I can assure you. Um, you know, it's, these things happen in life, and uh, but it's, I can assure you all the things that they're saying about the pressure of the job, no, I've been able to deal with that. Um, that's not a problem. So uh, it's just one of them things. Do you ever sit down and think, well, don't mind playing them, wouldn't want to play them? There's some good teams in this competition. Well, you, I'm not going to tempt fate. But uh, as I say, I think we can go there along with about six or seven other countries that I really feel you could say there's a batch of favourites, if you like. And I'll allow myself to say we might just be in them favourites. But it was a strange game, but uh, I think we've got the confidence and I, I certainly feel we've got the players to actually achieve it. We need a little bit of good fortune, but we need the right preparation, we need everything done. And, and in many ways, we need the whole country behind us, from the media to the supporters to everyone. And if we can do it all together, then fine. It's not just me. 
It's not just the players, it's the supporters, it's all the staff, it's everybody working uh, in a very positive frame of mind to give us the best possible chance. You can't promise anything, but if you get the best jockey on the horse, you've got a good chance. Tony Banks, Minister for Sport, thanks very much for, for coming in Pleasure. today.